What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Blu-ray cast. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that this is going to become a weekly thing that we do where it'll allow me to touch base with you guys. Just hang, kick it with you guys for a little bit. Talk about the news. Talk about what's coming next week. What Blu-rays, 4K, UHD discs we have coming to us next week. And just to, to wrap on some important topics, man, about our hobby, about physical media, about movies in general, about a lot of things. I'm really excited to do this. Um, so let's just get kicking on episode one. Before I do, just a little bit of uh, house cleaning. If you guys like my work, if you like the channel, the best way to support it is to share this video and other videos on this channel. Please like my videos, subscribe to my channel so you get more and more of our content. We got a lot coming your way. And then comment and let me know what you think. Any any advice is good advice, right? I mean, unless you're on Twitter and then it's, I wouldn't follow that advice. Let's just put it that way. But anyways, Let's start by getting into the news. And there was there's really not a lot of news this week in the 4K Blu-ray front. Um, we did get a little bit, though, from our friends over at the digitalbits.com. And that was just kind of a, a little, it's a one <laughs> sentence, actually two sentence line in this news story right in the middle. But I definitely thought it was worth highlighting. Um, Kino Lorber, some of our, uh, one of our favorite boutique studios, Kino Lorber, great stuff from them. They've announced that they are going to be releasing Mel Brooks Spaceballs on 4K Ultra HD soon. Now, they say soon, so we don't have a date for when this is coming. But what exciting news is this? Spaceballs in 4K. I mean, this is fantastic. I'm not certain, and I need to go back and check some back catalog to see if there are any other Mel Brooks titles that have been released on 4K. I don't think that I have any. So if this is the first Mel Brooks title to be on 4K, this is going to start an exciting trend of some great films that we should be seeing coming to 4K. It, now, I assume a lot in saying that. I assume that because we're getting Spaceballs, we're going to get Mel Brooks other films. I only say that because I seem to notice this trend where a director's movie will come out, followed by a bunch of that other that director's other films. If you take a look at Stanley Kubrick, right? We get, you know, one film and then we get another. We get Shining or we get 2001 A Space Odyssey. We're getting Full Metal Jacket. I wouldn't be surprised if A Clockwork Orange is coming. I think I actually heard a rumor that it is coming to 4K. So we should probably expect that soon. Eyes Wide Shut. I mean, we'll probably get more and more Kubrick. If you count, honestly, Spartacus is a Kubrick film and that came out on 4K. So. That that was kind of a trend with him. Christopher Nolan, you could say the same thing, right? One film comes out, then the next, then the next, and you're getting Inception. You're getting, But a lot of Christopher Nolan, because he's such a new director, a lot of his movies are just going to come out on 4K anyway. But I'm hoping that we see a similar trend with Mel Brooks. I'm hoping Spaceballs opens a door, and then we can just go right down that door and get a bunch of Mel Brooks releases. You know, Robin Hood Men in Tights is a really underrated film, in my opinion. It's I guess I haven't watched it in a ton of years, so maybe it's really stupid, but um, I love it. History of the World. Tons of Mel Brooks movies that are definitely worth a look in 4K because, as you know, I'm a big fan of catalog titles in 4K. I just think they look better. I think new movies look great in 4K because they're just they're cleaner and you get a, you know, and that's some people's thing, by the way. But I like the old stuff because I like the film, the grain. I think that the details are really, really clear. And then you're just, a lot of times in these 4K restorations, they're going back and changing things that were changed for the Blu-ray release. They're doing original color grading. They're trying to make the movie look exactly like it looked when it was released in movie theaters. And that's something that I can appreciate. And that's kind of what I want in my home theater experience. That's what I want when I'm watching a movie. I want to watch the movie that I watched in the movie theater or that my parents watched in the movie theater. I don't want to, I don't want to see it altered. That's not my thing. I'm a little bit of a purist in that regard, but I do think that Kino Lorber is going to do a great job. Spaceballs was released in 1987, believe it or not. And Honestly, it's every bit as enjoyable as Star Wars for other reasons. It plays into the whole idea. It takes Star Wars and then it, it like makes it a mockery, which you would think fans would be offended of, but it does so in such a, a loving way that you enjoy the heck out of it, right? It really plays heavy into the merchandise aspect of Star Wars. There's a recurring theme and joke throughout the movie. Spaceballs, the toilet paper, Spaceballs, the, the, the lunchbox. You know, there's all these like 
this kind of hit on Star Wars of what a marketing machine that became. Um, and Spaceballs makes fun of that a little bit. Rick Moranis is great in Spaceballs. Really, the whole cast is excellent. Um, so I'm really excited to see this. I wish there was a date on this, um, but there isn't. And I'm a little disappointed to that, but I will say Kino Lorber's probably going to do a good job with this. we got Mad Max coming from them, and I'll actually touch on that a little bit in the same article because they do talk about it. But um, Kino Lorber's the bomb, man. So Spaceballs, 4K coming soon. I just wanted to hit on that. We also, it's not in this story, but I'll say it, Chernobyl, the HBO series, um, that is also coming out on 4K, I think at the end of the year, I think in December. So that's coming too. But let's take a look at something that we've heard was coming a little while ago, also from Kino Lorber, and that is Mad Max, 1979's Mad Max, okay? It's coming out in 4K Ultra HD on November 24th, so get ready for that. I'm, I'm personally incredibly excited for that. Um, if you see this, don't worry about that Joanne's ad right there. Um, so anyways, we, we got some of the special features that are going to be on that disc. It will have Dolby Vision HDR, which is fantastic, but it's going to have audio commentary by art director John Dowding, cinematographer David Egby, and special effects artist Chris Murray. It's mo- and, and it's going to be moderated by the filmmaker Tim Ridge. That's going to be interesting audio commentary. If you like commentary tracks, that's for you. Um, it's going to have the Australian 5.1 track and a 2.0 lossless mono track. And then you're going to have the English dub 2.0 lossless mono as well. So coming with the Australian track, which is a little interesting probably for some people, but I, it's definitely a purist move, right? You want that Australian track. Um, it looks like they're also hoping to get a new interview. The Blu-ray that will be included in the package will have interviews with Mel Gibson, um, Joni Samuel, um, David Egby. It will have the same audio commentary. It's going to have Birth of a Superstar. Mel Gibson is a little featurette. Trailers, TV spots, all that good stuff. Okay, so the Mad Max disc itself, uh, the Mad Max package there with the 4K Ultra HD and the Blu-ray disc is going to come with some interesting special features. That's that's interesting news because... um, I mean, I to me, I was already going to pick this up, anyways. This was never a, this was never in question, okay, for me personally. But for some people, it might be dependent on what those special features are. Maybe this will lead some more people to buy buy the movie. Maybe not. But it was important to know. And, and in case you're into that sort of thing, I wanted to touch on that a little bit as well. So. And hopefully this notification hasn't been up. If it is, it has. I apologize for that. So let's get into our next news story. And this one involves Blue Underground. And this is courtesy of Blu-ray.com. So Blue Underground has now released four, four, well, three, no, four 4K UHD films. Maniac, Zombie, or Zombie 2, They've released The New York Ripper, and they've released House by the Cemetery. They're also releasing Daughters of Darkness later this year, and they have announced their sixth 4K film, Vigilante. This will come out on 4K Ultra HD. It is a Bill Lustig movie. Bill Lustig, I believe, is also the owner of Blue Underground, so just interesting to note there. Um, But Vigilante is going to come with a new 16-bit restoration from the original 35 millimeter camera negative dolby vision hdr uh it'll have an atmos track which blue underground has done for all of their films and it's been great it's going to have audio commentary it's going to have interviews it's going to have oh wow three audio commentaries so take your pick theatrical trailers radio spots promotional reels um a booklet reversible sleeve it's going to have vintage poster art you're going to have this is an interesting package it's going to have a lot of stuff in it and um it's just important to note that this is blue underground's sixth disc into their 4k uhd releases because i noticed something the other day and it is something that i want to talk about i really want to hit on this because i think it's super important Um, By the way, and I'll note on this before I move on, 
the the Blue Underground 4K UHD discs have been nothing short of phenomenal. Every single one of them would be a recommended pickup by me. I think they're all great. Um, whether you like the films a lot and you're a mega fan or you just like horror, most of them have been horror films, if not all of them, I would say any of them is worth a pickup because of the quality that goes into the restoration. And they just look stunning in 4K and the audio, the Atmos tracks are fantastic. Blue Underground does a very, very good job with their releases. They really, really do. I mean, it's, it's, they do, they do first rate work on their 4K releases. So I, I, I would recommend any of their previous releases, by the way. And I would say Vigilante is probably going to be the same. It's probably going to be an easy pickup for me. We'll review it on the channel whenever it does come out. Looks like December 15th is going to be the day that comes out. And if Amazon actually ships it to me on time this week, I, I say that with a little bit of bitterness because I should be getting shivers and it looks like I'm not going to be getting it this week. By the way, Best Buy, also just real quick on a tangent, they sent me a steel book that's all dented and beat up and like the front cover of it's pulled up. I'll say it's hocus pocus on, on Steelbook. I'm a little upset about it. I'm going to go to Best Buy tomorrow to see if I can get another copy for our haul video on Sunday. But if not, I'm going to show the broken one just so you guys see what I mean. Just outrageous. I'm sure it's the post office's fault, honestly. I'm sure it is not Best Buy's fault. It is probably the post office's fault. So take that for what you want. But a little upset about that. But I wanted to touch on this. So Blue Underground is a boutique studio, right? If I were to... If I were to say, here's a good example. Blue Underground is like the Insane Clown Posse, okay? Aero Video is like Katy Perry. Kino Lorber is like Celine Dion. And then Criterion is like the San Francisco uh, Philharmonic. Um, that's, that's how I would say that, right? Criterion is probably top-notch boutique studio they're definitely the snobbiest of the boutiques criterion fans are always a little snobbier than no offense if you hey listen if you're a criterion fan and you're watching this video i love you i really really do and i appreciate your support but look you have to admit criterion is by far the snobbiest of the boutique studios okay they charge an insane amount of money for their blu-rays and yes you do get a lot of extras yes they are great quality but they dip into that whole art house film, you know, cinema as an art um, concept really, really hard. So they put out a lot of these like artsy movies. They put out some great stuff too. I mean, don't get me wrong. I have a ton of Criterion releases back here on the wall. Of, well, maybe not a ton, but I have at least six or seven Criterion releases back here on the wall. And that's because I'm real nitpicky with my Criterions. A lot of these like foreign art house films, that's not my cup of tea. It might be yours. There is nothing wrong with that. Good for you for experiencing that type of art. But for me, that's not that cup of tea. I like to dip my toes in the ICP waters. I got a lot of Blue Underground back here, okay? And a little bit of Katy Perry because I got a lot of Arrow Video too. Those are more my style, but I'm also more of a horror fan. So I'm just going to gravitate more towards those boutique studios a little more than I would maybe a Criterion. Now Criterion puts out some horror movies and I get them. But that's just what it is. Now, I say that to lead into this conversation. Criterion has announced its December titles. Okay? And these are not bad titles. Crash. Okay? David Cronenberg. Great movie. All right? Uh, and you're getting a new 4K restoration of the film. Um, you know, I'm going to say some of these wrong, aren't I? Oh, gosh, I am. Anyways, you get Machete. I'm going to say it's Machete. Is it Machete? Is that how you spell Machete? Muschetti? Whatever. There it is. Okay. Um, that you're getting another 4K restoration of this film. Um, whatever that film is. Uh, a more Pero. Uh, an a foreign, a okay. A Mexican film. I don't know what this is. I have no clue what this movie is. Do you get what I'm saying now when I say Criterion's more of the snobby art house film? boutique studio they I, I don't know what this is it's getting a 4k restoration um what is, what did someone at criterion just go you know what for december we're just gonna put out we're just gonna put out the longest title ever anyways 
I don't know what this movie is either. I probably should, someone who enjoys film, but I don't. Uh, I don't. No. So this is also, though, a note. It's a high-definition digital transfer. That artwork on Crash, by the way, that is dope. That is dope. So that's all right. But that's not to insult Criterion. But what I notice here is that while you're getting 4K restorations of the film, they're both going to be downscaled to Blu-ray. I don't think any of these are 4K UHD titles. And that's what I want to talk about today. Blue Underground is on its sixth 4K UHD disc. Kino Lorber released Hannibal on 4K. They're now releasing Mad Max on 4K. And it looks like they're going to be releasing Spaceballs on 4K. Scream Factory is releasing They Live later this year on 4K. UHD. Why hasn't Criterion dipped its toes into the 4K UHD market? I don't quite understand how the leader of boutiques, the Disney of boutiques, because let's face it, that's what Criterion is. Criterion is the Disney of boutique physical media shops. And they have not dipped their toes into the 4K UHD market at all. And I looked to see there's no news of them dipping their toes into the 4K UHD market anytime in the near future. Now I have to ask, more out of curiosity than anything, but also just because I want to know, why is this? As someone who collects 4K UHD titles, there's a ton of them on the wall back here. With Disney announcing they are no longer going to be dipping into their back catalog to release physical 4K UHD discs, and Criterion seemingly ignoring 4K UHD altogether with no announced titles, is this something that as a collector I should be concerned with? I now have the leader in film, in all honesty, the biggest studio in film for sure, Disney, ignoring 4K UHD going forward. And it's catalog titles. And I now have the leader in Boutique not releasing any 4K UHD titles. So I'm not sure if this is something that I should take as a sign that 4K UHD is on the way down. I would have said that maybe a year ago. But we've gotten some great release from Boutique, some great studio releases. That's changed my tune a little bit. I don't think that 4K UHD is on the downslope. I actually would say it's in the up. It's on an upslope. But I'm also a little concerned that Criterion hasn't even announced a 4K UHD disc. Now, I expect this to change. Everything I just said, I expect this to change. I think Criterion is just a little behind the eight ball here. I think other studios have dipped their toe in, and I think Criterion's afraid of losing money. They Maybe they think that by, by doing... But they've done the restorations. That's what doesn't make sense. You're just releasing the disc. You've done 4K. I mean, look at all these titles from December. You've done 4K restorations on 90% of these titles. Why not release them on 4K UHD discs? I just don't understand. And I actually think that if Criterion does eventually get into the 4K UHD game, this is going to hurt them because they took so long to get on the boat. With all of these other boutiques already, already in vogue. Why has Criterion been so slow to jump on? Now, one move that Criterion could make, one move that would be bold, it would be costly for them, but with their snobby nature of art house films, some people would consider Disney films to be snobby art house films. That might sound a little goofy, but Disney is the snobby art house of animated films. What if Criterion partnered with Disney to do some of their back catalogs in 4K? That's a bold suggestion, but I think somebody's going to have to do it because Disney owns 20th Century Fox's back catalog. And if Disney's saying, we're not releasing any of those back catalog titles in 4K, these boutiques, they're probably going to be picking some of these titles up 
Because there's just some gold in there that needs to come out. I wanted to highlight this because as collectors, and if you're watching this, I'm assuming that you have an interest in physical media. It's got to be a hobby of yours, or you just like this beautiful face and this sweet, sweet voice. Either one of those. You're probably interested in this, and you're probably asking yourself the same question. Why hasn't Criterion released a 4K title? So I, I wanted to highlight that because I just thought it was an interesting conversation point. I would love for you to leave a comment below in the comment section letting me know what you think the reasoning is here. Is it a business decision? Did Criterion run some numbers and decide that 4K UHD would be a loss of money for them? Are they biding their time for some big release? They have the restorations. Why haven't they done it? I just wanted to touch on that. Let's now take a look ahead into the future. Next week's releases. Next week's Blu-ray releases. And let's talk about some interesting pieces here. And there are a few just that I see right off the gate. So obviously, what, what do you have? You've got Full Metal Jacket and Whiplash. Both coming out in 4K. You've got a Blue Buy. Blue Buy. Ha! Best Buy. Steelbook of Full Metal Jacket, which last I checked on Best Buy's website was not available. So I'm not sure that this is actually going to come out on September 22nd. I think this might be delayed, uh, but Blu-ray.com still has it. Maybe maybe since my last time checking, it is available. Um, but Whiplash also has a 4K Steelbook uh, from Best Buy. Uh, just commenting on both of these Steelbooks, I will say the artwork on both of them is great. Whiplash may be a little better. But I like more, I personally like more simplistic uh, covers in my steelbooks. That's just a personal preference. I will say that the uh, Ghost in the Shell steelbook that I'm going to be reviewing, though, that is not simplistic. It is beautiful. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Another big, big uh, drop this week is the Vincent Price collection. Scream Factory is putting this one out. This is a reissue of an older box set that came out. I. I want to say way back in 2013, but I could be wrong about that. Um, so they're re-releasing this. And what I think is probably the most interesting is that uh, the original release had um, interviews with Vincent Price uh, before the movies. This one does not have the interviews. They couldn't get the rights to the interview. They couldn't use them again. The Vincent Price collection includes The Fall of the House of Usher, the Pit and the Pendulum, The Haunted Palace, The Mask of the Red Death, Witchfinder General, and The Abominable Dr. Fibs. All packaged in that box set. It's a beautiful box set if I remember from the original release. The Mask of the Red Death, as you see down here, also has a independent release. So if you just want that film, you can get it. Rick and Morty Season 4 will also be dropping on September 22nd. For those of you who enjoy that, The Faculty is getting a blu-ray release that's interesting the faculty is josh hartnett in that i think josh hartnett's in that anyways the faculty is a group of teenagers and there's like some alien invasion there looks like from dust till dawn's getting a release legends of tomorrow the complete fifth se five seasons of legends of tomorrow holy crap the Rob Zombie trilogy earlier, like two weeks ago, I think there was a Target Steelbook edition that came out that had all three movies in it. It was a pretty sweet set. Definitely worth the pickup. Just scrolling through. I mean, you can take a look at these. I don't know if any of these really, really speak to you. Uh, Rick and Morty Season 4 is Steelbook. They also have a Steelbook release for that. This, this, The Prophecy Collection is interesting. That's an interesting set of movies. Also, this Mimic 3 movie collection. I'm looking to pick that up in my haul next week. I know that's kind of a weird one, but... Guillermo del Toro did the first Mimic, by the way. It was one of his earliest films. It's not his first film. Take a look down here. You've got a lot of package deals here. Gangs of New York getting another Blu-ray release. Uh, this Hellraiser Series 4 movie, I actually have that. This must be a re-release. I have the same exact set. Stanley Kubrick three film collection on 4K. So this release is for those of you who have not picked up 2001: A Space Odyssey and The Shining. You're also gonna you're gonna you can get all three that and Full Metal Jacket together boxed up in a box set, if that's the way you want to do it. If you haven't got those other two films, this box set is probably worth it because those two releases are phenomenal. High recommendations on my part. They're definitely pickups. You want them. 
2001 A Space Odyssey was one of the finest films in 4K, in my opinion. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it really highlighted what HDR can do for an older film. The colors in that movie popped so nicely, specifically just in the set pieces and everything. I mean, that is just a stunning movie, visually. The Shining, of course, is one of my favorite movies of all time. Um, we're just scrolling down. There's so much just stuff coming out. Bridget Jones Diary. There you go. A lot of this stuff is probably already out and it's just being re-released. So there you go. There you have it. What is this? What is sh I don't remember seeing this one on the list. Rising Sun Media, huh? Okay. It looks like it's about a movie theater. Anyways, I'd never heard of that one, so I wanted to click it. But anyways, that's your release calendar for next week. Just to let you guys know what I'll be targeting for my haul video. Give you guys a little sneak peek of what to expect next week. We are looking at picking up Mimic, the three-movie collection, Whiplash Steelbook. We're looking very, very hard at Full Metal Jacket and the Vincent Price Collection. We might pick up one other title. We don't know yet, but that's what we're looking for for next week's haul video. So that's your release calendar for this coming week. 922. Now we're going to go ahead and pivot into the um the portion of the video where we talk about should you buys. And I'm going to take a look at four movie four discs, four sets. Uh, four items that we picked up last week and I'm going to let you guys know whether or not you should buy them in five minutes or less. I'm limiting myself to five minutes. There will not be a timer on the screen. You're just going to have to trust me that it's five minutes or less. So we're going to go ahead and take a pause and we're going to pivot over to that. You're going to see a little bit of a different background. Just relax. It's just the way things are. I got to make this beautiful face a little bigger and I got to make the screen share a little smaller. So that's what so that's what we're gonna do, and I will see you guys in momento. Anyways, let's talk about Superman Man of Tomorrow. This is a 4K UHD disc. Clearly, I probably shouldn't have had to say that. This is released by Warner Brothers, also by DC. It is a venture into their animated film series for the DC comics. Uh, but let's talk about whether or not you should buy this in five minutes or less. I am going to say, yes, you should. And I'm going to say that you should pick this up on 4K. So why should you buy this in five minutes or less? Go. Well, let's talk about the film. So this is actually, this is actually interesting because I will say that many of these DC animated films I have not enjoyed. I just haven't enjoyed them at all. Um, I think that there's a lot better out there in terms of animated DC storytelling. Really, Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, the Justice League Unlimited movies. Those are all really, really good DC animated features. And these films have never, never held a candle to those, in my opinion. Um, so I will say I was going into this very very with very low opinions very low expectations and i was surprised pleasantly i actually thought this is not a retcon of superman's um uh background at all this is not this is um it starts with a young adult clark kent we'll call him that not even young adult yeah young adult like in his 20s and uh he's an intern at the daily planet and i just thought this did a wonderful job of kind of telling an early superman story it wasn't offensive it didn't it didn't um abandon any motivations that you expect to see with this character it didn't take this character in a new direction that's offensive or disturbing like last jedi did with luke skywalker it did none of that it honestly respected the character respected what superman is what he should be it just told a little bit of a different story into how he met Lois Lane and how he kind of learned to use his powers and got a suit. And I thought it was very well told. Uh, the 4K, in terms of comparing this to the Blu-ray and why I think you should actually pick this up in 4K, it is a step above the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray of this looks really good. The 4K of this looks great. I mean, honestly, this is a great piece of animation on 4K. The lines are um, are more there's more refined color saturation in the 4k version versus the blu-ray again this is a very good blu-ray but the 4k is just just much much better um, colors are handled better the bit rate of this is four to five times higher on 4k than it is blu-ray you're just getting a better presentation of the film um, 
The lines, so what I thought was interesting was the lines. The, the character lines, so like the delineation between the character and the background, those lines were more vibrant and more obvious um, than they were on the Blu-ray. Also, the art style of this is a little different than what you expect with uh, some of the previous DC animated features. This almost looks a lot more like, um, uh, like Archer, really. Uh, that, that would be a great comparison, actually. The animation style of Archer with this film. Um, the story doesn't retcon. It doesn't ruin the character. It's an enjoyable film. There's a decent amount of extras on here. You get a little feature about Lobo, a little feature about Martian Manhunter, um, and you get from the vault two bonus cartoons from the DC Animated Universe. My cons here, you get a DTS 5.1 mix. It's an average mix. I didn't think there was anything spectacular with this audio mix. It's the same audio mix, though, that's on the Blu-ray. So there's no difference there. Um, in between the two. But honestly, if you buy this on 4K, you're going to get a better presentation than you are on the Blu-ray. So I would say just, just ship out the extra money. Get this on Blu-ray. This is not a bad movie. This is not a bad DC animated feature. And I'm hoping going forward, we're going to get more like this and, and less like some of uh, the killing joke, which I hated. Should you buy this? Absolutely. Pick this up on 4K. It is worthwhile. Next up, we have a Steelbook, a Best Buy Steelbook release of The Invisible Man on 4K. This is the, is it 2019 or 2020? This is the newer release by Universal of the film. Um, the remake, it looks like 2020 actually. So this is the 2020 version of Invisible Man. And this is a special Steelbook edition from Best Buy. Um, we're going to not only cover the film itself, but we're going to cover the Steelbook. Should you buy this Steelbook? Um... So let's get into that. Starting right now. Should you buy this? Absolutely. And I think you should buy the Steelbook. I think you should buy the Steelbook. This is one of probably the best 4K presentations of a newer film I've ever seen. How about that? How about that for praise? The picture here is absolutely crisp. It is phenomenal. The blacks are great. They're, they're inky blacks, but you can still see what's going on. Um, nothing is taken advantage of here. Um, the, the Dolby Vision is fantastic. Obviously, this is a newer, this is a native 4K film. It's not an upscale. Most digital filming is an upscale. So most newer movies are upscale from 2K to 4K because they have a lot of special effects. This is actually native 4K. Maybe some of the CGI was done in 2K, but it is a native 4K transfer. This, The detail in this is phenomenal. Honestly, if I could give this a rating out of 10, the, the video, the, the film, the video presentation of the film is a 10 out of 10 here. Very easy. Um, it is just incredible. The Atmos track has great bass. I probably felt the bass more than I did anything else. Some of the other special effects were muted a little bit. They were just a little quieter. But dialogue is given... Um, preference over everything else dialogue is treated very well here you're going to hear every word that is said you're not going to miss any dialogue as for the story itself this is really good again i went into this with pretty low expectations i a lot of people really like elizabeth moss she's great i'm just not her biggest fan but a lot of people like her um this film is well acted this film the story is well told this is a great new modern take on a classic, The Invisible Man. And it tells the story from the per victim's perspective, not from the perspective of The Invisible Man, which is what the previous Universal release did. This was originally supposed to be part of their Universal Dark Universe. Um, I don't know how this story would have been told if it were part of that universe, because it doesn't really fit in with a universe movie. Um, but again, phenomenal picture great audio um you get a little bit of extras not a lot and there are a few logic gaps like there for instance one example and it was a note i took he's supposed to be dead but his dog is still living in the house why would they just let the dog stay there anyway there's a few of those in there that you just have to like not think about but overall this is a fantastic story this is a fantastic presentation of that story video is about as good as i've ever seen on 4k audio is great and to talk about the steelbook i love simplistic steelbooks where the art is just super simplistic and different than what you get on the original release and that is what you get here this is a matte finish you're not gonna have to worry about ugly fingerprints um if i just show you the back so great artwork here great simplistic artwork this is absolutely a pickup we would give it an 8.5 out of 10 if we were rating it it would be highly recommended and yes you should buy this and you should buy this in 4k 
Next up, we have Ghost in the Shell. Now, this is the Steelbook from Best Buy. The Steelbook is absolutely beautiful. I want to show that. I want to showcase that. Just stunning. Just beautiful. That's the slipcover inside. Very, very pretty release right here on that Steelbook from Best Buy. So if you're going to pick up the 4K version, I think it was only a couple dollars more for the Steelbook. Absolutely, you should pick up the Steelbook without question um, if you're going to pick this up. Now, this is an interesting one. This is an interesting one. Because I think this was the one that I was most disappointed about was this release. So should you buy this in five minutes or less? Yes, but with a caveat. If you are a steelbook collector, you should buy this. If you are, this is buy. This is the best this movie has looked. It is, and the steelbook is beautiful. It's a new 4K transfer, but that might be about as good as I can say. This has an Atmos track. It, the low end is lacking in audio for this, but not only that, I felt like. This was very front driven, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but this is not an overly impressive Atmos track. Um, the colors in this film, in some instances, this film looks really, really good in 4K. In other instances, it looked incredibly bright and incredibly washed out. Now, why am I not going to hold that against this film? Why did I still recommend this? Because that was the direction that was given. That is how this film is supposed to look. Now, you can love that or you can hate that, but that is how this film is supposed to look. So I can't ding this for respecting the original way that this film was supposed to be presented. I can say that I disagree with that, and I think that the HDR10 actually makes it, or the Dolby Vision and the HDR10, quite frankly, make it look worse because I do feel that way. I think that it highlights those brights. And so not only are you given a, a picture that's overly saturated and overly bright, you're, you're getting it amplified by that Dolby Vision. So there were, there were certain scenes when I was watching this on my TV and it just looked terrible. It looked terrible. There are some people who are complaining about missing songs in the movie. I don't know anything about that, and I'm not going to comment on it. If you're a purist, that might bother you. There are some other tracks here. You get a Japanese track. You get an English track. They're both Atmos, so you got you to appreciate that, that they gave you both options. Um, and, and there's a problem that some people are happy, and I read it on the forums, and I saw Jeff from over at Films at Home, which he is a great channel, by the way. Um, but I saw him mention this. There's some flickering with the HDR, with the Dolby Vision, where your screen will like flick like that, which is so annoying. I've heard that's a problem. I didn't have a problem when I watched this, um, but some people are having that experience with Dolby Vision. So that's just something to keep a, keep an eye out. So why did I say this was recommended with all that stuff I just said? I said there was a caveat. This is still the best this film has ever looked. So if you're going to pick this up and you don't have the Blu-ray, you might want to pick it up. Now, if you can find the Blu-ray on a good deal, I would just pick that up, man. I don't even think I would bother with this. But if you're a steelbook collector, you're not going to find a more beautiful steelbook than the one that's here. So should you pick this up? Absolutely. If you're a steelbook collector, get this because it's going to look really good on your shelf. If you're a big fan of this movie, this is the best this movie's going to look. If you're a normie, I don't know if I could recommend this. I think I would recommend probably just sticking with the Blu-ray um, because you're not getting enough of an upgrade here to warrant the extra price tag. Now let's talk about what I would consider my main event of the week. And was there ever any question what that main event was going to be? No, of course not. That was going to be the Alfred Hitchcock Classics Collection 4K Ultra HD. Oh my goodness. On some of the greatest films ever made in 4K. Honestly, in my opinion, they are. Hitchcock is, I am a bias. I'll, I'll admit it. We all have our biases and I got mine, baby. And I love Hitchcock. I love him. Rear Window is one of my favorite movies of all time. So obviously this was going to be my highlight because Rear Window has a 4K. Look at this. My camera's not picking up on it. Rear Window right there. Sorry, camera. But Rear Window is included in this. You get Vertigo, Psycho, The Birds, Rear Window, all in beautiful 4K. Now, 
Should you buy this in five minutes or less? Of course you should buy this. There's no question you should buy this. If you are a classic movie fan, add this to your collection. If you are a film of Alfred, fan of Alfred Hitchcock, add this to your collection. These are four fantastic films that are worth owning and they look even better in 4K Ultra HD. Now, for the notes of this review, I really, really want to highlight Psycho, Vertigo, and The Birds. Vertigo being what I think was the best looking of the bunch, and The Birds being what I would consider the worst looking of the bunch. It's also important to note that Psycho and Vertigo both get DTS-X tracks. They're fantastic tracks, and The Birds and Rear Window get 2.0 tracks. So... They didn't get the DTSX treatment, probably because people saw them as the lesser of the two films. That's fine. That's an opinion. Again, I love Rear Window. Um, you get two different versions of Psycho on this. Two different versions. So not only are these four great, fantastic movies, but you get an unreleased version of Psycho that you've ne that's never been released before. You're getting that here. It is the uncut version of Psycho. Um, it was the movie that was seen in 1960, exactly as intended by Alfred Hitchcock. It's got additional footage. First time. This is Hitchcock's vision of this movie. It's very few extra scenes, but they're they're there and they, they add something. So let's talk about the birds, because really that was the worst presentation in this set, but it still looked great. There's smudgy shots, but you can't tell if that was what was intended by the director, if that's just the way the film was shot, or if that was the transfer. I don't think it was the transfer. I actually think it was the way the film was shot. Because I think The Birds has always looked the worst. In my Blu-ray Alfred Hitchcock set, the, the Birds was the worst looking one. So I just think that's the way it is. I don't think that... I think that has to do with the, the original, the negative. I don't think that has to do with the transfer or this restoration or any of that. Okay, these are This is still the best that all four of these movies have ever looked. HDR adds depth to the colors where color exists in the black and white obviously those are always made to look better by hdr because hdr is really going to highlight blacks and whites it's going to make your whites brighter your blacks darker and your grays more delineated so i actually think that the, the black and whites here are incredible okay so i can't say enough good things about psycho and vertigo vertigo in particular looked phenomenal in my opinion it's really up there with some of the best transfers you're going to see in my opinion the new tracks add a new level of audio there are extras aplenty here tons and tons and tons of bonus features on each movie um so no movie gets left untouched with bonus features um and if you're a purist you get those 2.0 tracks that you can hang on to so I don't even think I need to say much more. Should you buy the Alfred Hitchcock Classics Collection? Do you have a 4K Blu-ray player? Do you have a 4K TV? Then absolutely you should pick this up. Because again, these are four classic, classic movies with Psycho being revolutionary in terms of horror. Um, I really, really think you should pick this up without question. This I would give a 9.5 out of 10. This is a must-own disc for your collection. This is almost perfect. And I actually think if the birds and rear window had gotten DTSX tracks, I probably would have said this is perfect, the perfect release. This is a 10 out of a 10. This is a masterpiece. But it's just held back a little bit by that. So 9.5 out of 10. This is a must-own. Yes, you should buy this. Thank you guys for watching the Blu-ray cast. I really, really appreciate you sticking around with me for this first episode. I hope to do this every week. We'll talk about news. We'll talk about events. We'll talk about anything we need to talk about in terms of physical media. And then I'll do these five minute or less should you buys. Um, also, if you like the channel, please support me, subscribe to this channel, share these videos with anybody you know that has an appreciation for physical media, physical media, physical media. I will see you guys next time.